So welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at 1944 D-Day to the Rhine. <laughs> this is from Worthington Publishing, uh, and, it, and um, designed by Dan Forney. Now, I almost stumbled on that because I'm very used to saying 1944 Battle of the Bulge, which was the first game in this 1944 series. So this is a system that we have played, although this is uh, on a different scale, but uses the same core mechanisms in it. So, D-Day to the Rhine. That's exactly what you're getting in this. Uh, so this is a one to two player game. You're gonna play this two players. Um, although it's very easy to solo. There's, there's like no hidden information in this. Nice and easy to, to pass. Uh, this is a two hour war game about the the kind of, not even like the Normandy campaign, it's like the the French campaign, the liberation of France. I mean, it's Northern France, so you don't do the Champagne landings or anything like that, but you're going, you're doing, you do all your little landings, and then it's all the way over. And it looks like we might have landing options. Ooh. Interesting. Not, not really, um, that'd be very, that's very curious. But yeah, two player game, light war game, very fast paced. I really liked Bulge because it did exactly what it said on the tin, uh, as I'm hoping for the same thing for this. This is a really easy game to recommend to people as their first Hex Encounter, uh, at least 44 was, so hopefully this is, is kind of of a similar type of vein. So, we have a couple bits and pieces on here. And it, it starts with our um, different objectives. And this is something that uh, Worthington likes to put in some of their games. Sure, we could replay the same scenario over and over again. But here you've got some variable objectives. Uh, and you'll have options to kind of write down what the victory conditions look like and what the objectives were. And to see how that played out, they give you a pad of these. It's nice to have got a photocopy of those. But having some, you know, you can do your historical uh, conditions. But having nice little variants like that that's built into the game again, really, really enjoy that as, as little extras that they add on. So, like many uh, Worthington games, they give you two copies of the rules. Love that here at the Player's Aid. Really, really enjoy that. These rules, what, one, two, most of this is just explanations. But yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Like, that's the rules. Then there's optional rules with the little variable um, objectives and all that stuff. Uh, and, and some bits and pieces that play it on the back with the terrain. But you're looking at, at most, like eight pages of rules. And that is genuinely an at most. Like half this stuff is barely rules. It's more of just explanations of counters. But these are really easy to learn. Uh, and I'm very excited to kind of jump back in because the game system was fun uh, and light and playable and when it got it went along at a good clip but was also <laughs> quite challenging uh, which we'll kind of take a look at that here in a second. So, we have the German turn track. So Germans are going to have their turn track that they're going to go through and this has their uh, different reinforcements that are going to come in and then it looks like we've got uh, uh, variable reinforcements that are coming from uh, Rundstedt and where you're going to place those. Is this a setup? Yeah, this is a standard setup diagram as well. So this is where you're going to put all of your coastal defenses, and then you're going to weep when most of them are useless. Uh, <laughs> then we have our allied turn track. Right, it's the same thing, but it's for the allies. Here's, instead of having the variable reinforcements, here's your different reinforcements from the different uh, army groups, and your little turn track with standard reinforcements. Uh, and then we're going to have our quick setup. Uh, with the Normandy close-up. This is what we're going to your units. Uh, and this one, we have German placement pool. Ooh, and this is our Ardennes learning scenario and Ardennes counter offense. Interesting. Or you could just go and buy Battle of the Bulge and play that. Uh, so, two sheets of counters. And I hope that you can tell these counters are massive. These are one inch counters and they are pre-rounded and they are gorgeous. These are, let's see if we can catch the light here so you can see, these are linen finished counters, but they are a matte linen, or at least at best a satin linen. 
not a glossy linen, but like I've got some games which are glossy linen finished and those are hard to read. But these punch really easily and I cannot express to you how clean the edges and corners of those, that is extremely nice uh, die cut and yeah. Here's all your like fixed fortifications and like uh, and coastal defense forces. These are really terrible units. These are your combat units. This is not a big game with massive stacks. You'll have a, a, a you know a, a, at most two units stacked. I think at most. Uh, and rarely in this game, it's a little bit larger map, a bit more freedom of movement, so you'll probably have longer lines. And then you got a couple of markers for if units have moved or attacked. Uh, different control markers as well. But yeah, all the stuff that you would kind of expect in a light war game. And I, these are like, the counters are falling off the counters, <laughs> off the sprues. Those are very nicely cut. So let's get those set aside. And then we have the map. And we'll get to this here in a second. Okay. Uh, let's get it the right way around for you. There we go. And this is the map. All right. So yes, Normandy, France, Belgium, Germany. Here's the Rhine. Right. You got to land your troops. And then you got to swing round uh, and, and get to and or presumably across the river uh, and take the route. Well, yeah. Uh, so again, let's for reference get a couple units out. These one inch counters fit really nice in these massive hexes. Everything's labeled very reasonably well. The terrain is very clear. Uh, Worthington has a style. If you've these trees, I'm like, oh, I've seen those trees before in uh, American Civil War games, <laughs> right? So that's forest and or bocage, although so this is labeled bocage here so that you know that that might be slightly different uh, to how the forests work. But yeah. The, the board is just a map. Remember we had those off map plates, which had kind of the turn tracks on it and stuff. All of that is kept off map. That's the board, love that. So the rest of what's in this box is this uh, counter tray that they give you. Um, the lid doesn't sit on it amazingly well, but when you have everything folded up in the box, you see there was no shipping insert. The board itself and all this keeps this pressed in. So you can keep it, use it, do what you want with it, but you can line up the counters in here, right? Ooh, they kind of fit in. You can divide them up, there's a lot of space in here. But one of the uh, defining components of this series of games are the dice, which come in these sealed for freshness packets, which we appreciate. Ooh, and these are different. Okay, oh my gosh, these are awful. So, the, the most important thing about this game is that <laughs> it, this system, you roll these custom dice uh, and it is very challenging. So you're gonna roll a number of dice and you're trying to get successes. This is a success for a, an infantry unit, right? That matches an infantry symbol. That's what an infantry unit needs to hit. Um, an armor unit hits on an armor symbol and an infantry symbol. Ooh. And on this one, they got a new symbol, which are these aircraft. So I presume, and the German dice do not have air support on them. So I presume the air superiority, I don't know if you have to commit to that, but you've got a potential of three hits on these allied dice and only two. <laughs> on these uh, aw awful German dice. In Arden, you only had two on all the dice, pretty much, and it was, uh, the amount of times we whiffed, it was, it was remarkable. And partly that's us, but partly like, this challenging dice to do any significant amounts of hits. It's really hard to kind of eviscerate people in this game. Although this one, you know, they've got more hits on these allied ones, it might be a little bit easier. Um, I didn't see any particular solo rules, so I think just for solo play, you're just going to play both sides, which might be good because this is going to be a German retreat, right? Uh, you're going to have a few counterattacks here and there, but this will be a, uh, a heavily, uh, heavily allied proactive game and a more defensive counterattacking game for the Germans. 
So take that for what you will, but the system itself is really good. We played that in Battle of the Bulge. I've, ever since they announced this, I've been very excited to get it to the table, and here it is. So D-Day to the Rhine, 1944 from Worthington. Check this out if this is something that you're interested in. Again, light, playable, two-hour war game uh, on the French campaign. I appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from the Players Aid.com.